On today's episode of the Carolina Sports Guy, we're talking Sweet 16. Yeah, the 16 most notable players of the 1970s for North Carolina Tar Heel basketball. Before we get into today's episode, please subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, folks. Pound that like button. Let me know that you like this video. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified for more content just like this video here. And leave some comments. Let me know what you think. All right, folks. I started looking down and started thinking, you know, I could have done an endless supply of talking about the greatest players who played for the University of North Carolina. And particularly being a kid who grew up watching some, was a small child watching the Tar Heels in the 70s and really got accustomed as I was playing ball in the 80s and in the late early 90s. And just all the great players who played for the university. And I could have talked about different Final Fours or different championships, and I will. Um, but my main focus was really, I said, let's stick it to the 70s. Because we go back in the 60s and before, there were great teams, great players. We look in the 80s, definitely when you got Worthy and Perkins and Jordan. Um, and even in the 90s and the 2000s, you know, even, even just a few years ago, we've had great players who played for the Tar Heels. So when I look at this list, there's a few people on the list I'm not quite aware of. But looking at their average, looking at if they had a sustainable career, a career after they left Chapel Hill, now how well did it go? Uh, Dean Smith was a head coach from uh, 1969 to 1979. I include 69 because 69-70 season. When I got to 79, I did not include 79 and 80 because uh, basically you're talking about the 80s at that point. Now, number 16 on this list is Lee Dedman. Lee Dedman played, and he played with some great players like Larry Miller. Larry Miller did not make this list because he basically played his ball in the 60s and got Carolina to a couple Final Fours in the late 60s. UCLA happened to be the buzzsaw we run into. Um, but Lee Dedman, in 70-71, he had a 12.4 point per game average. Uh, and he also ended up playing professionally for one year in the old ABA. He played for the Utah Stars in 1971-72. So he had enough talent to move on contributed a little bit, and he played for the Tar Heels on some of those late 60s teams, but really probably the best year he had was 70 and 71. And this is when South Carolina was kind of a force at the time in the ACC as well. Number 15, well, number 15 had a better career than what I can put him on the list, and that's Rich Yonaker. Rich Yonaker, I got him playing 78 to 79. Of course, that's going to be his first year. Uh, 79, 80, 80, 81 is kind of when he's going to end up going and, and playing his best ball for the Tar Heels. But then again, like I said, we're considering the 80s. Uh, like I said, he had a more polished career in the 80s, but he was starting to blossom in, in this last year, 78, 79. Um, and he had a 6.8 point per game average, even as a young player. Uh, now, he did play one year in the NBA. He was a third-round draft pick, and he played for the San Antonio Spurs. Number 14 on the list, Bill Chamberlain. Played from 1969 to 1972. He might have played in the 68-69 season. But looking at these three years, 12.4 point per game average. He was a third-round draft pick at Golden State Warriors. However, he played in the ABA for the Memphis Tams. And you think, what the hell is a Tam? Well, it stood for being where Memphis is located on the map, Tennessee, Arkansas, Mississippi, right in that border. And that's what they call it, Tams. And he also played for the ABA's Kentucky Colonels. And he finished up his stint, Bill Chamberlain, playing in the NBA for the Phoenix Suns. But he, in the early 70s, had a really pretty polished career for the Tar Heels. Number 13, John Kuster. John Kuster played from 1973 to 1977. And in 1977 alone, he had a 7.7 .7 point per game average. He was an ACC tournament MVP. And he was a third-round pick of the Kansas City Kings. But he played... Uh, primarily uh, for Denver and Indiana as they finally moved into the NBA in 70, uh, 76, 77. Okay, but the one thing you might know about John Kuster, Dean Smith point guard here, a guard, he ended up becoming a Detroit Pistons head basketball coach in the NBA 2009-2011. So the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. All right, number 12, Dennis Wojcik. 
Wysick, I believe, 1969-1972, 16.8-point per game average. He was first-team All-ACC in 71-72. He was a second-round pick of the Boston Celtics. However, he ended up signing with the Carolina Cougars of the ABA, and I've covered them in another video if you want the history of the Carolina Cougars. Look that up for the Carolina sports guy. Uh, and he played w with the Carolina Cougars from 72 to 74. And then when the Cougars ended up relocating to St. Louis, he played for the Spirits of St. Louis from 1974 to 75. Number 11 on the list, Tom Lagarde. Good big man, 74 to 77. Averaged 12.4 points a game. 1977, he played for Denver in their first year in the NBA. 1978 to 1980, he played for Seattle. In 1980, 1982, he ended up playing for Dallas. And this is early on when they first started the NBA franchise. And then he goes and finishes his NBA career after playing one year overseas. 1984, playing for New Jersey. All right, moving up to our top ten. 1970, 79 to 70s, the Sweet 16 in the Carolina Tar Heels basketball. Uh, number 10 will be Dudley Bradley, 75 to 79. Now, in 78, 79, his last year for the Tar Heels, he averaged 9.2 points per game average. And a lot of people think, man, that's the best average he had. But, man, he played four years for the Heels, and he just consistently got better. And, you know, he was very important in that 77 NCAA championship. He was very young. Uh, 79, though, he, you know, he just played really good basketball. But the thing about Dudley Bradley, he was an even better pro. In 1979, you think, man, Bradley, 9.2 point per game average for the Tar Heels. Remember, a lot of that had to do with Dean Smith. Dean Smith limiting the number of points players. He didn't have a lot of players that scored a lot. I mean, he had really deep benches and teams. So Dudley Bradley ends up being the 1979 first-round pick of the Indiana Pacers, and he played with them from 1979 to 1981. Then he goes and plays for Phoenix for a year, 81-82. Then he plays for the Bulls, 82-83. Then he ends up going to Washington, playing for the Bullets in 84-86. He plays for Milwaukee, 86-87. Plays for New Jersey, 87, 88, and he finished this illustrious 10-year, 11-year NBA career in Atlanta, 1988 to 1989. So here's a guy that played a decade in the NBA, and you look at his stats and say he was mediocre, but he wasn't. He was a team player. He was very versatile and vital. He was a key starter and contributor for this Tar Heel team. Just didn't see the points per game average because we spread it around and had such a deep bench. Now, number nine. Mike O'Corn. Mike O'Corn played 1976 to 1980. Okay, um, really won't get into his 79-80 season, but it's the three years to begin with. He averaged 15.1 points a game for the Tar Heels. He was a first-round pick of the New Jersey Nets back in 1980. He played for the Nets from 1980 to 86. He played for the Washington Bullets 86 to 87, and he ended up going back and finishing his career at New Jersey. 87 to 88, Mike O'Corn. And he played with some other good NBA talent, I mean uh, ACC talent, when he played for the New Jersey Nets, Buck Williams and, and Mike Zeminski. Um, just some really good players that played at Maryland and Duke. Uh, Mike O'Corn playing for New Jersey Nets. Number eight. Number eight I remember very well. 1977 and 1981, Al Wood. And I know we're really getting into the 80s because Al Wood was so instrumental in the 1981 National Championship game when we lost to uh, Indiana. And if he had one more year eligibility, he would have got his championship. But he was so key for us to get to the Final Four in 81. But we're only talking about the 70s. So in 1977, 78, his rookie campaign, Al Wood 9.1 points per game average. 78, 79, 17.8 point per game average. We see a difference with him and Dudley Bradley, although they played primarily around the same period of time. Um, he was a first round draft pick for Atlanta, but he also played for the San Diego Clippers, the Seattle Supersonics, and he finished his career with the Dallas Mavericks. Number seven, the Secretary of Defense, Bobby Jones. What a big man, 1971 to 1974. He averaged 13.7 points a game for the Tar Heels. He was a 1974 second-team All-American. 
and he ended up being the 1974 first round pick by the Houston Rockets. Fifth overall taken. Uh, however, he ended up signing with Denver of the ABA instead, and he played in Denver 74 to 77, and in his Denver joined the NBA, he played there 77 78. And then I remember him greatly because he played 78 to 85 with the Philadelphia 76ers, getting his NBA championship with Dr. Jones and all those guys. Um, and actually, his first year in Philadelphia, uh, the, the Sixers, I believe, it, it went to the NBA um, finals, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I might have been the year before, but he, he was so vital for the 76ers. But Bobby Jones was known as the Secretary of Defense for the Tar Heels. Number six, the Greyhound, the great Walter Davis. He played 1973 to 1977. He averaged 15.7 points a game for the Tar Heels. Uh, 1977, All-ACC. Not just that, he was a six-time NBA All-Star, but he was a first-round pick of the Phoenix Suns back in 1977, and he ended up playing with them from 77 to 87. Uh, 1988 to 1990, um, he played with Denver, uh, then he goes to Portland for a year, and then he goes back and finishes his career in Denver in 1991. Um, he was a 1978 Rookie of the Year, uh, drafted by Phoenix, like I said, in 77, but he ended up being a Rookie of the Year in 78. Number five, and a lot of people would have moved Walter Davis at five, maybe even Al Wood ahead of this guy, but George Carl. And George Carl was a great point guard, 1970 to 73. Uh, those Larry Miller years that were Final Four teams for Carolina, you know, George Carl was there early on in the 70s with Dean Smith. He averaged 13.8 points a game as a point guard. Um, and the guy, you know, he was drafted in round four by the New York Knicks in 73. But San Antonio also drafted him in the ABA in 73, and that's who he played for. He played... 1973 to 1978 for the San Antonio Spurs. That last year, 77-78, was an NBA year. So, yes, he played a majority of his three or four years in the ABA. Uh, I say three or four years, 73, 74, 75. He played four years in the ABA, and then it's been his fifth and final year in the NBA, all the Spurs. Uh, and he is known as one of nine NBA coaches who have won over 1,000 NBA games and he was the NBA Coach of the Year 2012-2013. And much like John Kuster, George Carl, didn't, uh, Apple didn't fall from, from the tree. He learned a great deal, a lot, from the legendary Dean Smith. Number four on this list, played 1967 and 1970. So we're only talking about the 1969 to 1970 campaign. Very instrumental player in the history of the Tar Heels. Uh, especially with integration, you're talking about Charlie Scott. But uh, my God, the one year in 69-70, he averaged 27.1 points points per game. 1970, he was drafted by Boston in the seventh round. But he ended up going to the ABA because he was drafted much higher. And he played for the Virginia Squires in 1970 to 1972. Then he goes to the NBA 72 to 75 and plays for Phoenix. Finally joins Boston in 75 through 77 and played for Boston. And in 77, 78, he goes and plays for the Lakers. And he finished his illustrious career, um, like I said, playing all in the late 60s for the Heels. Uh, 1970, great player for the Heels. And I got him a four, maybe a little high because he only had the one year in the 70s for the Heels. But like I said, 27.1 points a game. He played all those 70s throughout the NBA. Uh, in the ABA and the NBA, and he wrapped up his career 1978 to 1980 playing for the Denver Nuggets. Number three, number three, a pretty good forward, I'd say, Mitch Kupchak, 1976 to 19, 1972 to 1976, 13 and a half points per game. He was the ACC Player of the Year in 1976. He was second team All American in 1976. He was first team All ACC, 75 and 76. He was a 1976 first round pick of the Washington Bullets. 76 to 81 is when he played for Washington. He ended up playing for the LA Lakers, 1981 to 86. 
picked up a, a ring for the Bullets and a ring for the Lakers, I want to say. And, of course, we know him as the general manager for the Lakers for many years and currently is now the general manager for the Charlotte Hornets. Number two on this list, the great Bob McAdoo. 1971-72, he came out of Greensboro, you know, played very briefly uh, one year here for the Tar Heels. 19.5 points per game average. First team all ACC in 72. He goes into the NBA draft. He's drafted by the Buffalo Braves. He ends up being the MVP of the Buffalo Braves for the whole league, the league MVP in 75. Uh, Two-time NBA champion. Uh, like I said, he played for Buffalo 72 to 76. Played with the Knicks 76 to 79. 79, he played for Boston. 79 to 81, he played for Detroit. 81, he played for New Jersey. And then 81 to 85, he played for the Lakers. This is where I think he got his, his, his championships. He might have got one in Boston, but he did, I know, got at least one in L.A. And then he finished his career. Uh, the great Bob McAdoo, 76 in Philly. But, man, when he played for the Buffalo Braves, he was a league MVP. He was an awesome force. Uh, he didn't see a long history and career from Bob McAdoo at Carolina, but, man, he was awesome when he was there. And then the number one all-time great, North Carolina Tar Heel, 1970 to 1979. Dean Smith has an arm on the court. Another great point guard. He's been an assistant coach for the Tar Heels now in college basketball. 74 to 78, Phil Ford. 18.6 points per game average in that period of time for four years. That's our point guard. 1978 NCAA Player of the Year. Got us to the 77 championship game against Marquette. First team All-American 1977 and 78. ACC Player of the Year in 78. ACC Tournament MVP in 1978. He was a first round pick, second overall pick by the Kansas City Kings. He played for the Kansas City Kings from 1978 to 1982. Going to play for New Jersey in 1982. 1982 to 1983 played for Milwaukee and he had finished his illustrious career 1983 to 1985 playing for the Houston Rockets, the great Phil Ford. And he is number one definitely on that list from 70 to 79. So folks, what do you think of today's content for Tar Heel basketball? Leave me some comments. Hit that bell notification to be notified of future contents like in today's video. Please pound that like button. Let me know that you want to see more content like this. And by all means, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. It doesn't cost anything.